Welcome back, artists. Now, I finally got my album title in place. It involved me choosing a font um, and a befitting color that had enough contrast to really make it pop, make it really readable um, on my cover. And I centered it using the free transform tool to also change the shape so that it fits perfectly. I also added the subtext, the soundtrack, and as a side note, if I wanted any other graphics or text, say for stickers or like a mature rating or something, I just click, say, bonus tracks or something, and I can go back to edit, free transform, move it about. I don't have to hold shift in this case because I'm just going to rotate it. And if I put, say, a circle behind that, the new geometric shape, well, bam, you'll see I made a sticker. A life condensed into MP3s. Right? Little touches and flourishes like that really help to convince the viewer of the authenticity of this Frankenstein image, right? But one thing undermines that. Remember, if the point is trying to make a seamless looking image, um, if, if the point of photo editing is to make it look like you were never there and the image just naturally exists that way, which it is, well, I've got to make certain I'm consistent above all. And that means take a look at my shirt with all the shadows there, the light on the forehead. There's some strong light in here. But then it's weird that there wouldn't be, say, shadow underneath my hand on the turntable. It's clear that that hand was never there to begin with. It seems like a little insignificant element, but omitting a detail like that is something that maybe an outside viewer wouldn't be able to articulate. They'd look at it. They wouldn't necessarily recognize that shadows are missing, but they would know something is off subconsciously because like recognizing light and shadows, how we navigate in the world and recognize objects is three dimensional, something to walk around, for example, in our path. So that is an obvious tell that this isn't a natural image. So let's make that shadow and learn how to do it. I'm going to go to my paintbrush tool. And remember, I can control the radius up here. I'm going to choose black in my color picker. Then I'm going to make a new layer. All right. Now, right now, if I start coloring, whoop, you can see that it's visible because it is above my turntable and me, right, as DJ there. But if I bring the layer down, it disappears. Well, now it's in front of me, but behind the turntable because of the layer order. I want to make certain that this is going to be just, you just delete that. I want to make certain that it's behind my hand, okay? So I'm going to move me up for now. Let me put that right underneath the turntable. All right, let me move this up. Okay, I want to make certain that I can see this shadow. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to try to draw a pretty logical shadow right here. Mm -hmm. Now this could take some time and some careful surgery, but let me just adjust the opacity. Already, it's looking like a shadow because we're seeing through it, right? We need the image of the de uh, the turntable to bleed through. I can also use that opacity shift to clean up anything overlapping my fingers. Hmm? Gotta be careful there. Do a little clean up there. Plus the edges. Well, I don't want them to be so. Hard, I'm going to take this blur tool, this little drop right underneath there, and just blend it out so it seems like a natural shadow. Do you see that? All right? Let me show you what that looks like. Let me fit the screen. All right, there's the start. Now, let me show you one where I just jump ahead after all the adjustments I've made. I needed to make it a little darker, but it works there. And I added a shadow over on the left, too. That brings us one step closer to authenticity. Do a quick sweep. Uh, on second thought, not so quick. Take your time. Look around your image and look for any opportunities that might have been missed to really make a convincing, seamless blend of photos. Take a bit of time and do that. 